Hello and welcome to another edition of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, it is week seven, high school football. We're really getting close to the playoffs. I'm having a great time covering it. I know the fans are out there enjoying it as well. But first, let's take a look back at week six. We had two big games in the area, one in the track, one in the BBC, and Lima Senior stayed undefeated against Finley, and then we had at Liberty Benton stay undefeated against Arlington. What are your two biggest takeaways from those? Well, you know, that Arlington-Liberty Benton game was, was a lot closer. I mean, it ended up 25-13, but Liberty Benton scores 15 in the fourth quarter. They were losing after three quarters, 13 to 10. Speaks very highly of Arlington. You know, they've got a loss, but they, they still got a lot of season to play and, and looking forward to a good run into the playoffs. So that was a great game, both in the same division in that new BBC alignment. And so uh, that really gives LB the step up for the league championship, at least that side of it. But Arlington's a very, very good football team. Yeah, I think we can expect to see both those teams in yeah. the playoffs and yep. making some noise. Yeah. What about on the Lima senior side? A, a huge win. I mean, so yeah. much hype surrounding this yeah. game, and, and a lot of people were out at Spartan Stadium, mm -hmm. and the excitement is back in, Li in yeah. Lima, and, and then they go out and dominate Finley, who's in a division above them as well. So a big Division One victory for right. the Spartans who are in D2. And I think the key to that is you said dominated. You know, I mean, 52 yards passing for Finley, you know, and they were throwing it all over the place. Very good quarterback, very good receiver good running back too but but they they really got shut down in the pass game and and that just tells you how good Lima seniors defense is everybody talks about the offense I was you know say, we spent everybody knows their names but right. boy that defense is really good offensively 539 yards almost equally split between the run and the pass that is really balanced and they did this all with four turnovers cut down those turnovers what's the score then yeah. you know and they're going to have to cut down on the turnovers as they get on into the rest of the track here but what a great as you said, dominating performance for the Spartans. And you beat me too. That's the thing we always talk about their offense. We mm -hmm. have here for the first six weeks of the season yep. in the newspaper. Everybody is always talking about the offense. The defense was so dominant mm -hmm. too in that win over Finley. And we saw the points that Finley has put up in their first five weeks. So overall, yeah. great win for the Spartans. It was great team speed. And uh, Coach Crea and Coach Fell, they got that defense just so aggressive. I mean, they are so quick off the ball and they just run and hit. Uh, they're fun to watch. You know, a lot of people like offensive football. You'll love watching this defense play, too. Fans love it. Well, speaking of good defense, we've seen some good defense in the Western Buckeye League this season. Mm -hmm. And there was a big game in the WBL this past week between OG and Kenton. Yep. Kenton handed OG its first loss. Yep. And now OG gears up for a matchup with the only team that's left undefeated in the WBL, uh -huh. Wapak, this week. So yep. where, where do we stand in the Western Buckeye League? Well, it, it's huge back-to-back -back for OG. But you know what? You lose a big game. And what you want to do is get right back in the fire. No problem getting those kids' attention, telling them, we got to play Wapak. Everybody knows Wapak's really good. They're undefeated. So it's no, no downer week for those guys. They're going to jump right back in. But Kenton, boy, are they getting better and better and better. We talked preseason about all the losses, not only players, but coaching staff. Now they're starting to get t together a little bit. They're starting to, to feel like uh, they're the Kenton of old, you know. They win 28 to 3, 27 yards rushing for OG. Now, I know they're spreading it and throwing it more than, than in the past, but 27 yards, that's a dominant defensive effort. Uh, so now OG's got to go to Wapak. They can make everything right in the world if they beat Wapak and give all three of those teams one loss right. in the WBL. But what about Bath, Salina, and St. Mary's? They're all sitting at 3-3 three and three overall. This, this, I know those top three teams in the, in the WBL seem to have it under control, but what about any of those teams possibly making a run? Well, I think they can. You know, Bath has Kenton and OG yet to play, both of them. St. Mary's has both of them. Salina just has Kenton to play. They've already played Wapak, but Bath is, is three and two in the league. The other two are two and three. So, you know, any, any ideas of a league championship have gone that by the wayside. So now they're starting to play for the playoffs and they're trying to get points by beating other teams with good records. So yeah, they're in the hunt. You know, you want to finish in the top half of the league and that's the top five in the WBL with 10 teams. So they've got to beat the teams they're supposed to beat and try to beat a team that's got a record as equally as good as them or upset one of those top three. Moving to the NWC now, Spencerville remains undefeated. And is Zach Gokey the best back in the area? <laughs> We've talked about him a lot, and I know Crestview is also still undefeated, and, and Preston Zaleski is having a great season at quarterback. But yeah. for running back, Zach Gokey might be the cream of the crop. He is in the talk, that is for sure. 19 touchdowns. He, kick, he re returns kickoffs for over a 30-yard average. 897 yards rushing, 7.5 yards every time he touches it. And then he plays defense and knocks people all over the field. I mean, he is a really, really good football player. Is he the best running back? He, he'd be on my all-league team, you know, if I could have a couple of them, because uh, there are some really good running backs in the area. But boy, oh boy, 
Uh, they're, they're playing really well. Now, they got Bluffton coming to town, and I think Bluffton is the most underrated team in our area. They've lost five games by a total of 20 points. A Very couple close. of them on the last play of the game. That pass game is dangerous. I think they're going to go into Spencerville and give them a heck of a game. I really do. And you hope that Spencerville isn't looking ahead to their Week 8 matchup with Would be Preston. easy to do. Yeah. yeah. And two of the top teams in that yeah. conference. And, and you mentioned Preston Zaleski. You know, he's, he's probably an all-league running back, even though he plays quarterback. Right. Because he runs all the way. He's a leading rusher in the NWC. Wow. And, and he, he rushes for over 10 yards a carry. And we've known so, what Goki yeah. has done, so that's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. But, you know, Crestview and Ada, Ada's got the improved pass game. and They were young, and they're getting older now, too. They will be challenged. Jefferson and Grove still in the hunt, you know, just with a one-league loss. So uh, that, that NWC's got a lot of play yet to go. From the beginning, it's been a strong conference, and yep. throughout the season, it will remain one. Speaking of strong conferences now, how about the Mac? So <laughs> this is the week. This is it. Coldwater Marion, number one versus number one in the coaches' polls in Division Five and Division Seven. They're going to square off this week. How mm -hmm. do you prepare for a mm -hmm. game like this? How do you, what's the yeah. approach? Because a loss isn't fatal, as we saw right. last year with Coldwater, right. but this is a rivalry, and you can imagine the crowd that's going to be... Yeah, the, imagine what the 50 50 is going to be. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's going like to be way up there. Too, yeah. Um, yeah, this game doesn't need any hype. The coaches don't need any pregame speeches. You know, the players know what it's all about. They know the kids on the other team. They have great respect for them. Um, you know, like in a lot of these big games, mistakes are going to be huge. They'll be magnified. So you got to cut down on your turnovers, your penalties, your drop balls, you know, blown blocking assignments, all that stuff that high school kids do with regularity sometimes. These two programs don't. That's why they win and win and win. Um, but, you know, Coldwater lost last year. Maybe they'll change something up a little bit. Maybe their approach, maybe their pregame. Probably not. They've done it so long, so well, that they're not going to change. Marion Local, they're not going to change anything. You know, it's they our field. They haven't lost in forever. They haven't yeah. lost in forever. Weather may be an issue. You know, if weather comes in, then you might have to make some adjustments one way or the other. But, uh, you know, this, this is the brawl for it all, as they say. No doubt about it. It's going to be a great game. You'll be able to see it on WOSN. And the winner is in the driver's seat for the MAC championship. Time for a break now on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to break down a play from one of the past week's games. And you won't want to miss it. It was a great one. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Mark's Madness, and it's time to break down a play from one of last week's games. And Mark, we've chosen a exceptional play mm -hmm. from the Perry Waynesfield Goshen game. And Waynesfield Goshen is trailing by 20 right now, but check out this play by quarterback Lake Turner. Well, when you're down 20 nothing, coach is saying somebody's got to make a play. Somebody just make a play. Get us back in the game. We need a big play. Well, here you got it. Quarterback scrambles around. We'll take a look at it in slow-mo. Gets it to a fast guy. He outruns everybody on the field. That's a big play. 62-yard touchdown. Now let's take a look at how he does it again. Just a drop back pass you're going to see. Protection looks pretty good at beginning, but nobody's open when he's ready to throw on rhythm. Right there, protection's good. Got a double team on this defensive end. Everybody else has got a body. Now things break down a little bit, and you got to start scrambling around. So Lake Turner's trying to find a way out of the pocket, and now as the linebackers come up, he gets it to his receiver, and as oftentimes happens on a scramble play, the defensive backs get out of position, and now you see Brandon Turner see lots of green grass and a couple of guys in pursuit, but right there the dive is not good enough to trip him up, and he's into the end zone. Big play that got Waynesfield Goshen on the scoreboard. And Mark Schein called that play. He was really excited about it. It was a fantastic play. Yeah. I mean, the... The way that he was able to evade all the defenders yeah. and then the linebackers closing at him so fast still gets the ball to Brandon and then Brandon makes three defenders miss yeah. and sprints to the near side for a touchdown. A lot of times when a quarterback's scrambling, they forget about the pass and they're just going to run for their life. He didn't. He kept his eyes downfield and found a receiver. Well, tremendous play and thank you so much for breaking it down. Yep. I always love to hear his insight. He's always got an eye on something that I never would have noticed. So great job, Mark. Time for another break on Mark's Madness. When we come back, it's going to time to preview those week seven games. So many good ones coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Third and final down here on Mark's Madness. And Mark, about two thirds of the season is gone already. And who 
are your <laughs> title contenders? Is it is it an appropriate time to ask? Yeah, I think so. Up? You so, know, who I, do you got? we've got a, a decent sampling out there. You know, well, I think you got to start with the undefeated teams. I mean, they've proven at least to this point that they can win and they can win week after week. And you haven't avoided all the good teams by now, so they've they've won some big games. So you start off with Wapak, Spencerville, Crestview, Liberty, Benton. I'm going to hold a couple others till later. Okay, and then I think Arlington and Kenton are still in the hunt for a long playoff run. You know, they, they both have one loss against a quality team. Uh, they're getting better and better. Uh, they're in a division and a region, and I think they can do some damage. So any of those teams right there, I think you got to consider a great chance to go deep into the playoffs. Can they win it all? I don't know. You know, you look at the division, you look at who else is around the state because they're going to have to get to them somewhere along the line. You know, right. whoever's in Kirtland's division, not good. You know, Kirtland might be the best team in the state, period, you know. But then who's, who's going to be the favorites to win it? I think, you know, until they get beat, Marion Local and Coldwater are the favorites. They're ranked until number they get one. beat by besides each other. That's right. right. Gonna, That's right. They could beat each That's other. That's right. Uh, but they're number one ranked in the state. Everybody around the state knows them in their respective divisions. And then I think you got to throw the Spartans in there. I really do. They're ranked number five right now. They've just beaten an undefeated team. Uh, they are putting up points and playing defense, and they're not just squeaking by. They are dominating people. I know they got a couple of really good teams in the track yet to play, but they got Central Catholic at home. I think you got to look at the Spartans for, for some damage. They haven't done anything yet to make you think otherwise. So That's they right. absolutely and they're in Division II. Some division of those two. other teams are in Division One. They're right. not going to play them again. They're not going to play Finley again. Right. So they definitely deserve it. And yeah. Seven undefeateds in the area. Yeah. We'll have at most six after mm -hmm. Coldwater and Marion square mm -hmm. off this week. And that highlights our rebroadcast schedule. Before we get into the rebroadcast schedule, though, there's other games that we don't yeah. have on our air that are intriguing. What are yeah. those? Well, OG at Wapak, we already talked about that a little bit. I think Columbus Grove and Jefferson's a good game. You know, this is playoff points. This is serious implications on that. And then I think maybe the game of the, the, the week that we, you know, we haven't already talked about is Fort Recovery at Minster. Good you know, Fort matchup. Recovery, just one loss. Uh, Minster just a couple, but they just smacked Delta St. John's, completely dominated them, gave them 35 total yards. That's defense. I don't care who you're playing. Uh, this is this is playoff points. This is still in the hunt for the MAC. This is a big game. Fort Recovery is actually ranked second behind Marion Local in the in the state playoff power mm -hmm. rankings with the points. So mm -hmm. they they're still right they're up right there. there. Yeah. yeah, and this is a big game for them. And Minster's up there as well. I think yep. Minster might teams. even be first in their in their region. Yeah. Right Two now. good teams, good players, good teams. They're on a roll. So those games won't be on our air, but they'll be great ones you can see on the Sports Report. We'll have highlights from all of those. And then, of course, Coldwater Marion Local Friday right after the 75-minute Sports Report. That'll be 11:15 on WTLW. Bluffton at number 10 Spencerville. That's Friday on WOSN at 11 p.m. And then a Saturday doubleheader for you. Van Buren at Lipsick at 7, followed by Crestview at Ada at 9. And it should be a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Mark for joining us and that's gonna do it for this Mark's Madness. We'll see you next time.